Fifth day, Tuesday, Gospel of John 16, 2 through 13. Where to look for truth. Word of God, they will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. But I have said these things to you, that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. Meditation. Jesus Christ sent the Spirit Counselor who teaches and educates new generations of Christians. Through the Holy Spirit and throughout one's entire life, one is able to discover ever more deeply the truths of the Holy Faith. These truths are passed on in the Holy Scriptures, which were written through centuries under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and are given to us so that we might know God, ourselves, and the world. Divine truths are conveyed in the texts of our liturgical services, in the writings of the Fathers of the Church, in the decisions of the ecumenical councils, and other expressions of the teaching authority of the Church. In the Catechism of the UGCC, Christ our Pascha, we find collected that which is most essential for a faithful member of our Church. In order to know divine truths, we require a bright light, and that light is the Spirit, a flaming fire. During the Divine Liturgy we sing, We have seen the true light, we have received the heavenly Spirit, we have found the true faith. However, we need to add our effort to this light, to foster in us an openness to divine truth, to continually search for it. Divine truth requires our personal sacrifice and our readiness to share it with others, remembering that the goal of our life is always unity with the living Christ, the incarnate Word of God. Quotation Witness The Word of God should bear visible fruit in our everyday lives because only those who keep this Word, that is, obey it, will be called blessed in the Lord. In our parishes, there should not be a single family which does not own a Bible. I encourage all our faithful to read the sacred scriptures on a daily basis. This is done ideally through participation in parish Bible study groups or through prayerful reading at home. His Beatitude, Sviatoslav. Prayer. May our mouths be filled with your praise, O Lord, that we may sing of your glory, for you made us worthy to partake of your holy, divine, immortal, and life-giving mysteries. Preserve us in your holiness, that we may meditate all the day upon your justice. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Missionary Tasks 1. Personal Family By ourselves or together as a family, let us once again read his Beatitude Sviatoslav's pastoral letter, the Vibrant Parish, A Place to Encounter the Living Christ, 2011, and ask ourselves if anything has changed in our lives from that time. 2. Parish. Let us make an effort to ensure that our parishioners have access to a variety of good reading material. Let us take care that in our parish everyone can find something for his or her growth in understanding the truths of our faith. 3. Beyond the Parish. Let us share his Beatitudes pastoral letter on the Vibrant Parish with those who have never heard of it. If I have read some good book or seen a film with a positive religious theme, I will share it with others. Pastoral Letter of His Beatitude, Sviatoslav to the Clergy, Religious and All the Faithful of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, The Vibrant Parish, A Place to Encounter the Living Christ, Dearly Beloved in Christ. Holy Mysteries, Sacraments, and Prayer. The Word of God is the foundation of Christian life, while the Holy Eucharist is its source and at the same time its culmination. Gathered at the Divine Liturgy, the parish community unites with its invisible head, Christ, and with all the saints and angels, thus enacting a mystical union between heaven and earth, between time and eternity. The Divine Liturgy, which a duly appointed priest celebrates in unity with and on behalf of his bishop, is also a time of building up the Church, the Body of Christ, which has our Lord as its head. There is no moment more precious in our earthly life than the Divine Liturgy. That is why Sunday, the Holy Day of our Lord, should be honored by every Christian, and participation in the Divine Liturgy should be considered not as an obligation imposed by the Church, which requires our obedience, but it should be received as a gift from our Lord, who longs to encounter us in order to fill us with his grace and love. We cannot live without Sunday, was the motto of the early Christians of the first centuries, and they preferred a martyr's death to agreeing under pressure from the pagans to work on Sunday. 
This motto, we Christians of the 21st century, must make our own, and we should persistently guard the holiness and inviolability of the Lord's Day. Members of a vibrant parish also actively participate in the Holy Mysteries, sacraments. Regularly, if possible, even daily, they gather for the services in praise of our Heavenly Father. They frequently go to confession and receive Holy Communion. In a vibrant parish church, organizations combine their activities with common prayer, finding in it their strength and inspiration. No less important is our private prayer, personal and family prayer, which extends and continues our liturgical prayer in the church. Our parishes, and in them our families, must again become a school of prayer for all of our faithful, serving one's neighbor. Another important element, which expresses the inner nature of the church and reveals the vibrancy of a parish, is diaconia, which means serving in love or performing charitable activity. This service to our neighbor flows from our rootedness in Christ. Active love of neighbor is the vocation and task of each Christian without exception. It is only faith, acting in love, which leads us to salvation. Faith without works is dead. As you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me says the Lord Jesus. Let us look around us. In this world, there is so much tragedy and poverty, so much loneliness and sorrow, pain and suffering. All the challenging circumstances of our life on earth, these are for us an invitation to active love, which is an expression of living faith. The Lord wants to open our eyes to the suffering world so that we might learn to truly love and to express God's love to our neighbor by our attention to them, by our sincere sympathy, support, by our words of encouragement and good cheer, but mainly through acts of mercy. It is only then that we can consider ourselves vibrant Christians and our parishes can become places where care is given to the orphan, protection for the widow, help for the poor, and where the suffering of the sick is shared. Thus we will reveal to the world the maternal face of the church and will become the living sign of the presence of God among humankind, according to the words of St. Augustine. If you see charity, you see the Trinity. Leadership. The parish is a community of faithful who, under the leadership of the bishop and their pastors, fulfill their calling to unity with God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus constantly acts in our communities through the Holy Spirit, sending down his gifts for the development and growth of his body. The Apostle Paul thus explains, And his gifts were that some should be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The leadership of the parish community is exercised under the leadership of the bishop as head and father. Each parish should be an organized community in which, under the care of their pastor and in cooperation with him, members serve one another according to the gifts which they received from the Lord. Therefore, church leadership is not the fulfillment of a particular administrative office, but first of all, service to God and neighbor. In practice, this means that for a parish to be vibrant, it must have active parish and pastoral councils. In addition, a parish must have well-formed and mature co-workers who assist the priest in leading catechetical schools, church brotherhoods, charitable works, youth organizations, and prayer groups. One of the most important responsibilities of leadership in the parish community is discerning God's will and searching for the best ways of implementing it in the life of the parish. Fostering and serving unity. The Acts of the Apostles convey a sense of profound unity which existed among the members of the first community of Christ's disciples. The community of believers was of one heart and mind and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. This spiritual state of being of the first Christian community can be expressed with the term koinonia, communion, which conveys unity, harmony, and common life. To be church is to abide in the communion of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus, and the love of God the Father. Thus, the unity of the church is an icon of the unity of persons of the Holy Trinity. This unity can be seen on different levels. On the level of the universal and particular church, the Aparchi, and the individual parish. It may happen that through our weakness and sinfulness, we do not reflect this unity. Ever aware of this, we all must cherish and foster unity, preserving full communion with the successor of the Apostle Peter, the Holy Father, with the hierarchy of our church, 
with the local bishops and pastors who act in their name. The parish is a community of communities. In a parish, there will be various prayer groups, brotherhoods, and youth organizations. All of these are called to strengthen unity and love among the members of the parish community by supporting one another through prayer, by sharing God's gifts, and working together in a Christ-like spirit of service. We will be able to bring to life our synodal program, holiness of a united people of God. We cannot be indifferent to the fact that the descendants of the baptism under St. Volodymyr today are divided and estranged from one another. At the Last Supper, Christ prayed to his heavenly Father for his disciples, that all may be one. Bearing in mind these words of Christ, I sincerely ask you all today, let us pray for the unity of the church. Let us pray for the restoration of unity of all the churches of the Kivan tradition. And above all, in the spirit of the love of Christ, let us make every effort to avoid any words or actions which could damage our brothers and sisters in Christ or offend them. Even though at times we may be subjected to mockery and pressure, let us not give in to the temptation to respond to evil with evil. May Christ's prayer for his wrongdoers and the teaching of the apostle of the nations become a testament for us. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Missionary Spirit of the Parish Community Jesus Christ said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. And by this he calls us to reach outside our church communities to carry Christ's teaching into the world, to transform the world with the Spirit of Christ. A church community, renewed in the Holy Spirit, by its very life becomes a living sermon of Christ and his presence. Here it is worth mentioning one of the favorite phrases of Blessed John the Twenty-Third that, the parish is the fountain at the center of the village to which all come to quench their thirst. It is our wish that our parishes become such spiritual wellsprings so that people would be drawn to them and be able to find support and strength, love and grace. In one word, salvation. Returning to the Lord's Commission with which we began this letter, we will note, Jesus Christ teaches us that we are to be ready to bear witness to him not only with our life but also in word. Frequently, it is the case today that Christians are ashamed to acknowledge their faith, hiding it by their silence and passivity, instead of defending the Church of Christ and standing in the defense of the rights and dignity of the human person. Our pastoral initiatives, catechesis, divine services, the reading of God's Word, etc., should make us strong and unwavering in our faith, as well as always ready to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. With particular recognition and thanks, I would like to mention today those priests and religious who, guided by a missionary spirit, provide spiritual care to our faithful outside of the territory of our homeland, in particular to our emigrants. I also acknowledge those who preach the word of God in prisons, in the military, and to all who have yet to know and encounter Christ in their lives. Our church as a whole must support them and pray that they may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit in this most important ministry, dearly beloved in Christ. In listening or reading these words, many of you may ask, who will implement these important and much-needed initiatives? Who will ensure that our parishes are truly vibrant? The bishop, perhaps. Maybe our pastor, together with other members of the clergy. Perhaps this is partially the work of catechists or consecrated religious if their monastery is located on the territory of the parish. The answer to this question is simple. Each and every one of us is responsible for the renewal of our parish communities. Christ's commandments apply to all faithful Christians without exception. Together, we all form the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. That is why all of us need to be living stones as we build our parish community through which the church is present where we live. Therefore, I encourage all of you, open the doors of your hearts and your homes to Christ. Allow his Holy Spirit to transform you, purify and strengthen you in God's love. And I invite all laity, religious, and clergy to the renewal of our church life on our native lands and abroad. Let us move forward, strengthened in God's grace and trusting in his holy providence, which guides our church through the ages. I entrust all of you, dearly beloved in Christ, to the motherly protection of the most holy Theotokos. May our heavenly mother lead us to her son. May the holy protectors of the Ukrainian lands, in particular the blessed martyrs of the last century, intercede for us. Through their suffering, 
often with the greatest sacrifice of their very lives, our persecuted church, which found itself in the catacombs for decades, was truly vibrant and life-giving. By their example and their intercession, may they be a sign of hope for us and a promise of the Lord's blessing in our ministry. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. Sviatoslav.